And if we right click this and hit Google Linux token usage, you will see that we have barely used any tokens at all. We've only used 10 total tokens in me building this report that is fairly complex, right? Hey, 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 welcome back. My name is JJ Reynolds from Better Than Data. We are gonna be talking today about the pause updates button that is inside of Looker Studio. So inside of Looker Studio, very top right, right over here, you will find these pause updates button. Let's talk about when to use it, why to use it, what you should be thinking about when you are using it, and all the other pieces that might come into a play and affect and a little story time about how I accidentally spent $3,000. Probably should have led with that. Okay, let's talk about things. But first, if you have not yet joined Better Than Data, guys, head on over betterthandata.com forward slash join. We've got a whole suite of training tools. It is the only sunset subscription on the internet that I know of, or you can pay once, join for life, and you are in for a treat. So if you have not joined yet, because I know most of you probably have not joined, we have a few hundred people inside of there. Otherwise, Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. So let's talk about this button. By default, you will click on this button and it will say chart updates have been paused, okay? But what does that mean? So if I go over here and update this data and I say last 14 days, what happens? Nothing. So behind the scenes of every single data source that is inside of a Looker Studio report, that those data sources are refreshed. So when you come up here at the very top right and click these three little dots, you will see where it says refresh data. When you refresh data, what is actually happening behind the scenes is it's re-pulling that data back from its original data source. When With a GA4 Live connector, you can see that actually happening. So if I hit play, I can then right click here and I can see Google Analytics tokens and it will tell you for this report how many tokens it's used, how many pulls it has done, okay? So, but other data sources might not have that ability. For example, if you're using a paid connector or any of the other connectors like BigQuery, et cetera, it might not tell you exactly. So when you are using BigQuery, for example, you might have a live query that is loading data from your BigQuery database into your GA4 Looker Studio report. If that is the case, it is costing you every time you refresh that data. Quick story time, quick aside here. When I was first exploring BigQuery about a couple of years ago and inside of Looker Studio using BigQuery for all the shenanigans that you can do, I accidentally spent $3,000 in a single day because I was loading and refreshing the data source, a giant data source that had terabytes of data from Looker Studio and is very inefficient to know, use Looker Studio to connect to that database. So learn from me use the pause feature button that they now launch. And when you are building a report, you can then pause it, do the thing that you wanna do, and then update it, right? So that's fundamentally what is happening behind the scenes. So now let's use it in application. So here we will unpause this. You might have to actually hit refresh. I know it's kind of ironic here, um, or hit command R to refresh the actual data source. Very odd that they like really make you wanna do this. But let's say for example here, we have the GA4 live connector. We have the big query data source over here on the far right. Let's just say for example, we wanted to blend GA4 data and we wanted to add in the number of leads that have happened as another column. There is no lead event unless you have a custom metric, right? That you could do it that way. I'm gonna show you a different way of doing that, but let's pause things first. So I'm gonna pause this. We're really gonna copy this. So if I copy and paste it, nothing should break because it is the same exact data source. But if you select something, right, that might break the other one because it doesn't know what to filter it on. So just keep that in mind. But let's just come down here and we can just build something out without using any quota at all. So we will have session source we will also have event. So again, it's not gonna update because we are pausing the data source, but because we used our thinkers, we now know how to do this. So let me just show you here, if event name is this, sessions, we're gonna add a filter here, another filter. We're gonna include the event name here, right? That is inclusive equals to generate underscore lead, right? So remember everyone use your naming conventions, include event name that is equal to generate underscore lead. All right, now that we have that, hit save. And what we should see is this kind of like, it's all working in the background. So if you know what you're doing, I'm not using any quota at all. Any of the GA4 API limits do not apply to me. I'm gonna hit that. So now this should be just the number of sessions that contain the event name of that. If I hit resume, right? What will happen is it will load that up. Here's the number of leads that have been generated for each of those sources according to the GA4 API connector. We can then hit pause again. We can select this back one and hold shift to click this one up here. Right click and hit blend data. Alrighty then. Then again, our data is paused, right? We're still paused here. We can then see, make sure everything is combined. So we have our sessions. We have this over here. We can add leads to the far right to rename that because this has our filter applied to it of there. We are then going to hit save. All righty then. We can rename this to our session and lead data. 
And again, because it's paused, I'm using zero quota when doing this. Otherwise it would refresh, do all these things. We now have this new data source here. We can unpause it if we'd like to. It will then update things here. We can then drop in number of sessions right here. So then we had sessions. I'm not sure why it did this odd thing here. So here we should have the session source. We should have sessions and then we should have leads all in a single table. We can then pause this one more time get these out of the way, put sessions and leads on up here. You can see now that we have a pretty good trend and pattern on this GA4 Live connector. Again, we are still paused here. Now, say for example, we wanted to add in date, right? We wanted to have a little date range controller. We wanted to have both sessions and leads uh, in a time series, right? We are paused, remember that? Let's scroll, -y scroll down here. We do not have a date dimension because it's paused. We can hop in here. We can then add a date to our join technically we probably could just get by with that but again we are not using any of the quota when doing this right so that's the beauty of pausing things here hit save hit save it save hit exit out of that everything's going to act like he doesn't know what it's talking about but do not worry we are smart looker studio users so now we have this dimension of the date we then have sessions and we can also add leads let's just go into our style report we're going to change the one to keep them both at that but we'll use this one to be the right side and we'll keep it at bars so we can kind of just see a little bit of a difference here. All right, so now we can hit play on this and it will update and ta-da. Now we have updated this thing and it only did one pull. It wasn't consistently pulling every single time. This one up here decided to just poop itself. Okay, there we go. So now we have right here, we have the blended data with the leads and sessions. We then have up here, we have the actual number of leads and sessions in a table format. And if we right click this and hit Google Analytics token usage, you will see that we have barely used any tokens at all. We've only used 10 tokens total tokens in me building this report that is fairly complex, right? And now what we can do is we can pause this again. And if we wanted to build a little bit more, let me just get these out of the way, folks move these down let's just move them down a couple bits and bobs and now what we can do is we can actually come in here and add some scorecards again data is paused up here right so keep that in mind it's so it's not going to work so we can have our sessions right from our sessions and lead data let's actually get our ga4 native connector up here all right so we have sessions we could also add in leads if you want to, so sessions, and then we can add in a filter that sessions that contain the generate lead event. We can then do the number of sessions and views. So then you can see how engaging by page views, right? So now we've just basically built out, make this a little bit bigger here. I don't know why we have this so tiny, right? Again, keep this in mind. So this is the GA4 example here. I can see, you can see right next, we're talking about BigQuery next right there. So now we can hit resume. It should pull those in. Apparently there's no views, which is odd because that shouldn't be correct. But now we have sessions. We then have leads right here because it is the lead event that contains the event. And for some reason views, oh, that's why the generate lead done there. So now we have number of page views there. So all of this was done with very minimal token usage and very minimal impact on your GA4 API. So now let's take a moment and let's talk about BigQuery for a second. So if you have not used BigQuery, here is look a session summary table that we've generated using the good old BigQuery. You'll notice it looks a little bit different as far as sessions and leads, etc. Don't get caught up in that. Just remember that we're using BigQuery. So what happens when you use BigQuery is that every single time that you load up a new date range, a new like filter, a new whatever it might be, it actually goes into BigQuery, queries the data and brings it back to you. How it does that is a mystery into itself. Now, um, how it does that, it does charge you whenever you do query that. So it's kind of as if you were doing a live query and it is remarkably inefficient. <laughs> All right, that's one thing that everybody can pretty much agree on is, is that it is fairly inefficient to use the BigQuery uh, query situation. So let's talk about how you can look at those. So if here we're coming into this Allen's Canvas exports section right here, let's get this out of the way. And we are gonna be inside of just this entire project. Let's just do our master report report test and let's look at something individually right here. So. What we want to do here is if you come into this data set, I'm not sure why I'm stumbling on that word, and you get rid of this bad boy, and you come down here where it says project history. What you shall see is a giant amount of project history from Looker Studio loading in your actual data from BigQuery. So you might not even recognize any of these things because they don't make any sense, right? So here we're looking in selecting something from scroll, da 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 da, like here is selecting this, we have select host name, and then we have filtering. You can actually open up any individual one of these and you can say show job details. That'll then show you the details of that actual query that was run 
run, the size of it, the number of bytes processed, et cetera, et cetera. This is Looker Studio loading in that data. As you can tell, they're all loading it in at the same exact time. So here was one load there. We then have some other ones previously here. You can see how all of this kind of rolls into things. So theoretically, if I load this, let's just say, for example, let's just do the last, I think I've done the last, let's just go a random number of days. That should then pull in the BigQuery piece. Notice how fast that is, pretty sneaky, pretty fancy right there. We're going to wait for GA4. And what we should see if you refresh this is we should see that show up. Sometimes it takes a second if you need to refresh the page, but you will see those queries show up inside of your project history here. These are the same ones, so it looks like it's taking a hot second to show up, but you will see them inside of this project history, okay? So when you pause the data set, so let's go back in here and let's pause for a second. The same thing happens to all of the data sources. So if I was to come in here and select YouTube, if I was to have this paused, we can then grab any of this and and we can add a new chart to the page with that same information here, but it is paused. What you can do to get around this, I've noticed, if you copy a table, right, copy the table, and then you turn it into something else, it seems to uh, not actually be impacted by this. So if we turn this into a scorecard, let's see. Oh, well, never mind. I guess scorecard is not one of the ones that works, but let's just see. So here we've got a number of sessions. Let's just copy and paste this over here. We will then check on the number of leads. Let's just see leads generated. And we will just kind of compare those two really quickly here. So we've just built this out. We now no longer are hitting that quota, which you can find inside of your cloud and then inside of the project here. Now let's just refresh one last time, see if it loads up. There's one more query. Again, not sure why that's being, I think probably an old one there. But now we can hit play resume, however you want to call that, and it should pull up a semi-useful truth. And I always want to give myself some points on the back here, some pats on the back. Look at how close leads are to from BigQuery in comparison to the actual GA4 connector. We are pretty much dead on there. Sessions is off a little bit because that's just how BigQuery works and how session timeout summaries work, okay? So without further ado, guys, that is a few options of how you can use this pause button to like build a report, right? This has all of this data in it without hitting that quota limit, right? And without hitting, for example, BigQuery, like you're not gonna spend extra money with uh, Looker or, or GA4, you're not gonna use extra quota and you are gonna be off to the races in building reports much faster and more efficiently without having to wait for the response, having to wait for things to load. It's gonna pause everything. And if as long as you use your thinker to build out a report, you will be much better off in the sense of building reports without hitting any limits or getting a ridiculous bill like I did way back in the day. So without further ado, guys, I will see you in the next video. My name is JJ and have a great time building your Looker City reports. See ya.